Hello, it's a culture genie. The topic of today is going to be the Sunny Hadith collections. But before we can speak about the Sunny Hadith collections within Sunny Islam, we are going to go into what is an Hadith. In short, a Hadith, which comes from the root dal tha, which has to do with speaking and talking, happenings and telling things. And the word literally means that which has been ascribed to have happened or been told. In short, an hadith is a story, more specifically a story about Muhammad and his companions. Hadiths were originally oral stories that were recited through a chain of narration, that is to say a list of names from whom the story originates. This is called a sanad, or isnad, the chain of narration. And it pretty much is this guy said this to this guy that repeated it to this guy and claimed to have heard it from him and so on and so forth. But the idea is that it goes back to the Prophet Muhammad and his closest companions and details some story or happening regarding them and their actions. And this is important due to the fact that both Muhammad and his closest companions are considered perfect people to emulate in a religious moral sense within Sunni Islam. As the hadiths are one part of the tradition of Muhammad or his sunnah. And these stories were later collected and written down during the 8th to 10th century due to the need of using the hadith as a source for religious practice. Be it for religious law or for ritual or other things. In the traditional Sunni Islamic view of these things, the hadiths can be seen to have been preserved and to have been developed in four stages. First you have the age of the Prophet Muhammad when he lived. And as the hadiths are considered to be stories about Muhammad and his closest companions, it is from this period that the hadiths are depicting Muhammad's life statements and actions in the traditional view of the hadiths. The second stage is from the period after the death of the Prophet Muhammad. This is the period of his Sahaba or his companions. Some hadiths are from this period depicting the life of these companions after the death of Muhammad. But mostly this is a period where the hadiths are preserved orally by Muhammad's closest companions, who are considered the originators of the hadith stories, according to the traditional view of the hadiths. Then you have a third stage, after the death of all those that knew Muhammad personally, which is the stage of the Tabi'un, which are the followers of the companions, that's to say, the generations that only knew the companions but did not know Muhammad. According to the traditional view, these people recited and memorized the various stories that existed about Muhammad and about their closest companions. However, eventually also these followers of the companions began to die out and you entered the fourth stage, which was the stage of the followers of the followers. That's to say people that only knew the followers and did not know either the companions or Muhammad at all. Now there has been about 100 to 200 years of separation between the life of Muhammad and the recounters of these stories. According to the traditional view, there was beginning to become a worry that these stories would get lost if they were not recorded and written down. As it was just getting further and further away from the life of Muhammad and the longer the chains of narration are going the more risky it is for corruptions in the stories and that the stories become lost. Thus various hadith collectors began the work of trying to gather up all of these oral traditions and trying to sift through them separating the false ones from the true ones and creating categories for reliability in accordance to various methods and standards 
where chains of recital were used as a criteria for determining if a hadith should be considered reliable or not. Of course, the reliability of various hadiths are even discussed to this day, so it's not something set in stone. But anyway, the hadith collectors required that there should exist a chain of recital to every story, so that various hadiths could be cross-referenced and also determined if the people being used as sources are reliable or not. Now this process of collecting hadiths happens a couple of hundred years after Muhammad. And it also happens in a context where the Islamic tradition of fiqh, Islamic jurisprudence, or of understanding sharia and interpreting it, was beginning to develop into its more traditional forms. In fact, the developments of the schools of fiqh, the traditional four schools of Sunni fiqh, happens alongside the development of the hadith traditions. And uh, these schools develop various principles of deciding which hadiths to use and which hadiths not to use for their sources of interpretation. It should also be noted that the classical works of hadith collections that are known and used today, were developed during the 9th to 10th century. However, it still should be noted that the hadith as a concept actually predates the classical Sunni hadiths, and that there did exist hadiths even during the Umayyad period. So there had existed collections even back then during the 8th century, though these are not considered to be canonical or used within any current Sunni tradition. And we also only have remnants about it. But it's important to mention this because hadiths did not come from nowhere during the 9th to 10th century. There did exist previous traditions of recording the stories about Muhammad and his companions. However, the Umayyad period hadiths were probably rejected due to various political reasons because there was a shift of power from the Umayyads to the Abbasids. A new dynasty had taken power within the caliphal Islamic domain. And the development of these newer hadith traditions that are to become the classical hadith traditions can be seen as a part of this development. New hadith collections for a new time, or as the classical Islamic view would put it, recording the hadiths properly so that they were not corrupted by the previous administration. One more thing to notice about the hadiths here during the Abbasid period in contrast to the Umayyad period is that they were recorded by individual scholars and not by the centralized government of the caliphal office as such. Thus the classical hadiths were collected in a very decentralized manner. Though many collections were collected, there are six hadith collections that are considered the most important within Sunni Islam. And these collections are Sahih al-Bukhari, Sahih Muslim, Sunan al sughra Sunan Abu Dawood, Jami al Tirmidhi, and Sunan Ibn Majah. There is also al mutwatta that is considered of equal importance to these other works. However, that is only within the Maliki school of Islamic jurisprudence. These six collections of hadiths are considered to be the best collections and especially Sahib al-Bukhari that is considered to only contain true hadiths, though even this can be disputed at times in certain schools and contexts. You can notice the dates on the screen and also notice that these collections were collected about 200 years after the death of Muhammad. As I said before, the hadiths are recordings about the history of Muhammad and his companions 
in short story forms. However, there is some debate about whether these are actually representative of the life of Muhammad and his companions, or if they are more representative of the time when they were written down, if the hadiths are actually fabrications that reflect religious and political considerations of the 9th to 10th century, instead of being reflections of Muhammad's time. I'm not going to go into the details about these matters, but it's important to mention them. And to emphasize that the hadiths, from a non-religious standpoint, might have certain issues with them. As to what regards being authentic historical sources. Though the hadith collections might be doubted as being authentic representations of history, they cannot be doubted in their importance for the development of Islamic jurisprudence. And the hadiths came to become the chief source for most of the body of Islamic law that was developed by the four classical schools of Islamic fiqh, being the second part of the Sunnah, the tradition of Muhammad, the other part being the Sira tradition, which is the, the biography tradition of Muhammad and his life. I hope that you have liked this short introduction to the Sunni Hadith collections and why the Hadiths are important within Sunni Islam. There also exist Hadiths within Shia Islam and the third branch of Islam, Ibadi Islam. But those I will talk about in a later video. As I always say to my viewers, I am always open to questions and comments and I will try to respond as quickly as possible. So please do write comments in the comment section. I like interacting with you, my viewers. Please do subscribe as it would help the channel spread awareness about the humanities.